welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Paula, also known as The Snail Garden on social media. I will put links in the description box below where you can find me. This is my second November vlog of 2020. And this week, there are just a few little bits and pieces that I've been up to that I will put in afterwards. And I thought we'd take this opportunity to have a little chat about some crafting I've been up to. I'm going to start with dressmaking, because you're probably wondering what this is hanging up here. I haven't actually done any dressmaking yet. This is what I plan to do. This is the York Pinafore by Helen's Closet. I made this, I think it was last year. And this was my toile, just a wearable one. Because I didn't quite know how it would turn out and what it would look like on, but it worked out fine. So, I have bought some fabrics this week. I was originally just looking for a denim fabric to make another York pinafore, but at the same time I saw this pretty needle cord. And I'm not quite sure how it will turn out, whether it may need lining, because needle cord can be a bit grippy on whatever else you're wearing. But these are just going to be for me to wear at home to do the housework and things in, so. They're a practice, really, another practice run, just to see what they turn out like. The, let's put those down, because that denim's quite heavy. The pattern has two different necklines, a high one and a much lower one, because it's a pinnacle, and two different types of pockets, the patch pockets and a pouch style pocket. I'm not sure whether I want to do the pouch style pocket, not sure whether that will suit me, but I may have a go at it. Hello again. Slight intermission for son to eat breakfast at the other end of the table, because I sit at the dining table to record this. It is 11 o'clock on a Sunday, but it's breakfast time for him. The other sleeping beauty is still in bed. I probably won't see her until this afternoon. Right, where were we? Current projects. Whips. <laughs> oh, this one is not a whip. This one is Gombati by Brenda Gervais of Thy Needle and Thread. And it's a finished project. I'll just show you a close up first. This was my Halloween stitch for this year. It's stitched on 36 count linen that I hand dyed myself using carrot tops from the allotment. And it's stitched one over two threads. The pattern called for a different thread count and two over two but I wanted to use the fabric I had stitched and I think it does a pretty good coverage. Obviously you can see my hand through it but when it is um, framed I don't think it will show like that. I've used all the called for over dyed threads except for his pupils, I used a darker colour and his eyebrows because the eyebrows were pelican grey but I substituted toasted barley because my pelican grey looked very similar in parts to the old hickory. I was drawn to this one because I love cats, 
Anne. These bats I thought were so humorous. This little one is supposed to peek out of the corner of a frame. And I love that moon. With the over dyed threads, you can get a striping, which can look very nice, but I didn't want it for this project. So I have stitched in patches. So you get a patchy effect. I particularly like the patchy effect on the bat. He looks like he's wearing camo. I saw a frame that I would probably like if it's still there after lockdown. I saw a frame I like just before lockdown in a charity shop locally. And I thought I'll go home and I'll measure this because the bat needs to really be up against the frame. And I didn't know we were going into lockdown. So if I'd have known, I'd have bought it and just risked it. So that's my only finished object. I have started using a little notebook that my friend Deb, who's Tink Inkman, gifted me once. Good things take time, it says, because I do take a long while to make things. And I started just putting what I've done, what I've used, because already I'm forgetting. Did I use Raven for the cat's pupils? I can't remember. So for future reference, I'm going to put all my projects, cross stitch projects in here and the thread I used, how I stitched it and the fabric. So thank you, Deb, for my notebook. Only other cross stitch I have been working on is this little one. I believe I put him up on Instagram. I don't think I showed him last time. I found this in a book, a long forgotten project, originally for my daughter. A little, I used to make little Christmas decorations for them each year. And I was obviously stitching this one Christmas and put it away in a book and forgot about it. And all I have left to do is the back stitching around here. So I'm going to complete it. Now, funnily enough, the wreath is showing up two tone, which it is, it's two different colors. But when I'm stitching it, I can barely see those two colors. So if I do this again, I'd probably use a different one just to make one slightly darker. This is stitched on 18 count Ada. It's a really old project. I'm not so keen on this. I'd rather have linen nowadays. As you can see, it stands up on its own. And it's DMC threads. And my daughter loves rabbits, so hence the rabbit. I found it in this book. I was thinking about Christmas decorations again. See, it has some very cute little I've stitched that one for my son, and that one for my son, and this is the one I'm doing for my daughter. There's, there's another one I've done for my daughter. I should have looked for this first. Oh yes, no. Oops, to fold it slightly. And this one I've stitched for my daughter, another bunny. I used to collect little cherished teddy ornaments. That was why I was drawn to this. And I've also stitched this on my son's Christmas stocking when he was little. I was obviously doing it at Christmas time because there's a little piece of Christmas paper I've cut out. Must have been on one of the wrappings I used for my children maybe that time. I'll leave it in there to find it again. So that's all the cross stitch I've done. Next, I'm going to stitch some of these little strawberries as Christmas decorations. This is Deck the Halls by 
Blackbird Designs, a little booklet. And this is the first one I'm going to stitch. I've got most of the threads. See, they're all Weeks Dye Works. The only substitution I have is this one. I didn't have cocoa it must have been out of stock but I think that will work I'm going to stitch it on one of the other linens that I dyed probably one of these three this one was walnuts and it was a very quick solar dye. So it could look rather nice against that. Or this one was slows. Now when I dyed this, I think this was a really bright colour. But I thought it was a bit too bright, so I can't remember exactly what I did to it. I may have just put it in the washing machine to try and take most of the colour out. Yeah, shock horror, I put all of these in the washing machine to make sure that I got a, a reasonably colour fast dye at the end of it. So it would look nice on there as well. They'd stand out quite well on that one. Or I have this one. This one might have been quite dark as well. Which is elderberries. Now I deliberately tried to make it sort of patchy to get different effects. I'm not so sure on that one, maybe. There are other designs in the book which use different colours, but maybe I could do one of each. It would be quite nice to see those three in a bowl together, maybe. The other two I particularly like are the Christmas cactus. Now it's November the 15th, I believe. Yes, the 15th. My Christmas cactus has been out since the beginning of November. I think it's seasonally confused. And there's another little one I like, from me to thee. So maybe that would look quite nice on the one with the hints of purple. It's more of a grey purple, so the pink might look quite nice on that. Sorry, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> so that's planned. Next up, I have also ordered more threads and a couple of different charts but they haven't arrived in the post so I will talk about them at a later date. I have been binge watching Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch on YouTube and there's a particular pattern called The Visitor that I've liked for a while and she's also stitching Blackberry House I think it's called and just suddenly it came to me that the two of them would look really nice on a wall together. So I've ordered those two charts, so I'll show them next time. Floss tube is very dangerous. The only other item that I've been working on is a knitting pattern, Forever and Always, by Danny of Little Bobbins. Now, I... Sh I I'd put these away two years ago, probably at that point on one sock. I don't know why I put them away. There's always something brighter on the other side, I guess. Something else you want to knit, something new to tempt you. And I'm trying very hard not to do that with cross stitch. I have a lot of knitting projects. I was thinking maybe I will do a little bit of a whip parade. Or maybe, well, we could be here all day, so another time. So maybe I will do 
or shawls or blankets. Yes, I do have blankets. <laughs> Always starting something new, but I'm not going to do that with cross stitch. Hold me to that. This really pretty design is knit with the wool barns sock in rose gold. I think it would look lovely when it's blocked. And finished one sock. I will block these when I've done both of them and show them to you again. And I'm probably about three quarters of the way down the second sock. So those are going well. I'm trying to finish these before the end of November. That should be possible because these are in Danny's little sheet bag. I have another pair of socks. It's in a little bag I made a while ago. This is also a pattern by Danny. She brings out a Christmas Eve cast on every year. And these were the iced sugar cookie socks. And I want to finish these before Christmas Eve of this year because obviously I want to cast on the next ones. Now these I am knitting in the main colour is Eye of the Tiger by Dusty Dimples and I'm calling mine the Gingerbread Cookies because of the colour. And the other colours I am using are also by Dusty Dimples, Eastheat it has some of the gingery colour in it as well. And for the icing, I'm using just one colour, I think. And this is, I believe it's a Regia. It's just a commercial sock yarn. But I thought it went rather well this picks up the little hints of red that are in this one as well. Now my plan was to knit these over Christmas. This is as far as I've got. As you can see I'm doing all of the icing dots in the same colour and the top is in the contrast. It's one of my little, I think it's going to. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that is focusing or not. One of my little progress keepers that I sell in my shop, either face. I love these little ones, little beaded ones. The plan was, as I was saying, to knit these over Christmas and Danny and I were doing a little knit along on the love note, which is meant to be the quickest knit jumper, but I still haven't finished it. In fact, I haven't touched it since just before Christmas. The reason was my son threw a spanner in the works. That's beginning to be a bit of a theme for this video, isn't it? First is breakfast, and I will just pick up so I can show you what happened. For Christmas, my son bought me a wool couture crochet kit. So, <laughs> all knitting plans went out the window, and I crocheted, calling him Roger the Robin. And he's quite big, as you can see. He really is that size <laughs> so he took a little while but he's lovely so i never finished my socks sorry roger let's put you down 
Oops. He's landed on his beak. I never finished my socks, nor the love note, so. Those I want to finish before Christmas Eve. Luckily, once I pass these lovely little bobbles, it's quite a quick pattern. So, fingers crossed. I don't have anything else on the go at the moment. The only other thing I have that I could show you is a little bit more stash enhancement. This year I have been making from stash. Not buying anything, but that's all gone out the window now. When I was in Winchester, I saw this lovely fabric. And I've just got four of the designs, there were more. And I can't remember, oh, it's Riley Blake Designs. See, I can't remember. This set of designs and a couple of other ones were, are called Jane Austen at Home. And because we live not very far from Jane Austen's house, and Jane Austen was born not very far away as well, in Steventon, in Hampshire, where I live in Hampshire, if you don't know, I thought I had to have some of this fabric. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make yet. It might be a big bag, project bag. But it could be something else, we'll see. The trouble is with going on a yarn diet, fabric diet, any sort of diet really, is that once you fall off the wagon, you start buying all sorts of things. Or I do anyway. <laughs> so all my months of being good are now being undone in one month because I have several other things, including those charts I mentioned, coming in the post. I've been doing a lot of Christmas shopping as well online, so I can be forgiven for buying the odd little thing for me, maybe. I will put some vlog footage at the end of this chaotic ramble. I apologise, I didn't think this one through at all. No change there, I guess. We've been for a walk in the woods. It was very, very muddy, muddier than I thought it would be. So we had to go off piste and followed a deer trail. We did see one deer, which was rather lovely. I have been baking Christmas cakes. Every year I bake Delia's classic Christmas cake. But this year I've also had to make a second cake because my son has recently been diagnosed as celiac. So I found a recipe online on the Dove's flour website in their free section to make a gluten-free cake. And we'll see how that turns out when he eats it. I have yet to make my Christmas puddings. Usually make those in November and then a little bit of a break before any more Christmas baking takes place. We haven't been anywhere else because we are still in lockdown. We will be for the rest of November. I guess that gives me a good excuse to do lots and lots of crafting. So hopefully I'll have something more to show you next week. We are supposed to get some nice weather this week. We've had a horrible just looking outside because the sun has come out now. As you can see, this sort of flickering light is the sun coming through the window beside me. We've had some very wet and windy weather, so I think we're due some nice weather. And I hope to do a bit of gardening. I own, The only gardening I have done this week has been in the greenhouse. I think I might have done a little video of that. So thank you for 
for sticking with me and I hope you will join me again next week. Bye. I'm creeping around again. Do you want to join me? Say hello. He declined. <laughs> Bye. I'm just in the greenhouse and I'm going to plant the sweet pea seeds that I bought recently. Usually I plant these in January indoors, but I don't have any room on my windowsills at the moment. So I'm going to try and plant these in the greenhouse, because after watching Monty on Gardener's World, he said I can put these in the greenhouse and they should survive the winter. <laughs> we'll see.